Hi friends, I'm Olga Kölsch and welcome back to my studio. Today is a very happy day because I just received my own copy of my first book, How to Paint Watercolor Transparent Flowers. And I'm happy to the moon and back and looking forward to share with you what's inside this book and even more. I will choose one of the projects from this book and we will paint it all together today. So let's start. Inside in this book on the cover you can see all the flowers which are included into step-by-step -step instructions. I love everything in this book. Uh, especially pictures, they are very inspiring, a lot of close-ups. I think this book can be a really nice gift for a person who loves to paint. I love to collect those types of books by myself. In one chapter I talk about my tools which I use for painting, which will be handy for, uh, for transparent technique, you see. <laughs> it's uh, my working short palette. I will talk about paper and importance of paper. It's a crucial moment for painting this technique. And there are a few examples of how watercolor paper can really differ your final result. A very important part is colors, mixes and creating contrast. I will show you my approach to creating mixes. It's a little bit different from color wheel, which uh, many of you might know. I mostly focus on contrasts and how to create these contrasts. I will explain why it's mostly difficult to paint yellow flowers in this transparent technique. And for example, everything with pink and red shades, it's, uh, it's pretty easy. I will also suggest you all my already proven mixes of uh, colors, which you can just use for your paintings. Uh, if you want to go further and uh, paint your own projects, your own flowers, it might be handy. Now, uh, questions I got a lot, how to find this inner structure of flowers, how to paint what's inside the flower actually. And here I show how I take my references, some tips of uh, taking pictures, how I look inside what's inside the flowers. And I usually, I very often cut my flowers, as you can see. I often refer also to old botanical illustrations and that's, uh, that's a great source when you want to go into detail. As through my book I always refer to some certain parts of the flower, in inner structure of the flower I made this scheme <laughs> anatomy of a flower. So um, it's uh, pretty handy and I hope uh, you will use it a lot. I'm show you, showing you different watercolor techniques which I use exactly to create this transparency effect. I show everything not just on a piece of paper. I use a certain flower, a certain project and go step by step and explain all these stages, wet on wet technique, dry on wet technique, dry on dry technique and wet on dry. So uh, you can always use these uh, pages, this chapter to paint a tulip. So it's uh, like a bonus project in this book. I also show you how to create nice gradients. And uh, of course, it's nice to read, but I encourage you to uh, implement everything on a practice. Just follow me. And now comes the main part. It's six projects. I organize them in a certain logic from, first of all, from easy to more complex, but uh, also in each and every project, I focus on 
one important point uh, of um, painting with transparent technique. For example, in eucalyptus, I show you how to create gradients on bellflower. It's a little bit more about composition and different shades of bloom. I hope you really can master your technique through all the projects. Each and every project um, has its same structure some introduction um watercolor paints which i used and recommend to use for this uh, project materials and tools and at the end of the book you will see outlines for each and every project which you can just transfer onto the paper and they are made in one-to-one -one size it's exactly the size which i used to paint for this book I always show you references, how I work with references, how I turn this branch into this branch and then into that drawing, how I prepared my mixes for this exact project. Then it goes step by step instruction and you see it's, it's really very, very detailed. I hope it is well explained. I tried my best and then after each and every project, you will see an inspired gallery because it's always nice not only to follow step-by-step -step instructions, but create your own pictures, your own ideas. And I just show you how using the same technique, you can create pretty different things. Um, bellflower, reference, drawing, uh, logic, how I paint, step-by-step -step instructions, and then building up, building up the flower and inspired gallery, magnolia, here in magnolia, and now uh, inspired gallery. So it's not only about magnolias using the same technique, you can paint lilies, for example, iris, uh, reference, um, step by step which petal you paint in which order and different types of creating uh, nice paints and textures iris inspired gallery this is my favorite flower peonies um, so uh, my heart is beating when i or turn this page and you wouldn't believe this peony started from this reference, pretty different one. I use sometimes use reference just to get the idea and then I break it into details, petals. So a lot of work behind the scenes, you will see it. Step-by-step -step instruction, how we paint these looking complex, multi-petaled flowers. But at the end, you will realize it's not that overcomplicated and you can paint roses, peonies, many different flowers like this. And um, a rose. This is a gallery of roses, so you can use different references. Roses and peonies, they were painted in slightly different ways. We focus on different things and roses galleries and all the colors, all possible angles, uh, not all possible, many possible ways. And um, I show a little bit of my experience, what I'm doing after, after the picture is painted. I uh, sell my originals, I sell uh, my prints, posters. I work a lot as a pattern designer, so you can find fabrics. Uh, some brands are working with me to create uh, prints on fabrics. I create greeting cards. So it's a lot of ways for application of painting flowers. And uh, as I said, there is a chapter with all outlines from the book. And now I would like to paint with you one of the projects. We are going to paint Magnolia. This is project free from my book. At the end of the book, you will find outlines to each project, which you can just transfer onto your watercolor paper and start to paint right away. I already prepared my outlines. 
I usually use Fabriana Artistico 100% cotton, hot pressed. You can use any paper which is convenient for you, but I would recommend you to consider 100% cotton, hot pressed, 300 grams. In the beginning of every project, you will find what kind of watercolor paints you will need uh, and all other necessary things. So we will need quinacridone rose, burnt sienna, phthalo green and sepia. And with magnolia, you might be wondering, it's a white <laughs> flower and we are going to paint, oops, the pink one. I usually very free with my references. I see a nice shape, I see nice details and I think, okay, uh, it will be very lovely in pink. So let's, let's try it out. Now, very important thing of mixing shades. I will take quinacridone rose. Firstly, I make very bold mix and I add just a hint of sepia to make it a little bit warmer. You mix until you're happy with the color and then you grab with your big brush a little bit to the other dwell and then you dilute the second mix until it will get almost transparent, almost like water. And now we start to paint. I recommend you to use two brushes. Uh, I mostly use synthetic round brushes. One is bigger, one is smaller size. It doesn't really matter. I have my book with all step-by-step -step instructions next to me. This is very convenient. So I will follow my, my own instructions and let's see how it will work. Firstly, I'm watering um, this petal with my very tran transparent pink mix. All that petal. I need to water all the petal. Then I switch to my thinner brush, grab the bold mix from the next well, and go with the tip of the brush. I go along the edges. For now, I don't worry how it spreads. I like to make it a little bit brighter. So I go along the edges while the paper is still wet. This is very important. So you need to be a little bit more quick in this regard. Um, so I just do the outlines. And then I took my bigger brush. I remove the excess water with a paper towel and I go along the edges and soften and soften everything. I try to avoid these sharp outlines. That's why I use dump brush and soften everything. At this stage, while the paper is still wet, you can uh, add a little bit of details, for example, a little bit of color, usually for the middle vein. It's very typical for magnolia's petals to have a very certain middle vein, but I, I dilute everything. I usually recommend you to take the next petal, something which is not over overlapping now with the previous one. And we do the same, we repeat the same thing, watering the whole petal area with the big brush with big brush, switch to a small brush and I call it outline. It really looks like you're outlining each and every petal, but because we, we paint dry on wet, it distributes very softly and creates these nice organic mm, organic um, gradient. Once you finish, you wash your brush, dry it with a paper towel and go along one edge and soften and go along the other edge and also soften everything. 
you can add at this moment you can make even bolder mix to emphasize more on the bottom of the petals usually all the petals they have quite thinner tops tips and they are getting bolder and thicker the more they get to the uh, to the flower center so in about one third from the bottom of the petal any petal you can add a little bit more of bolder color just like this now before we switch to the another step we have to dry this very carefully we have to check whether it is really nicely dry and if it is we repeat the same procedure but we apply our translucent mix over the first petal you need to move your brush very gentle never press on it so not to destroy the previous layer usually if you use a uh, good watercolor paper with 300 grams and 100 percent cotton nothing happens with the previous layer next step same thinner brush outlines you can vary the pressure on your brush maybe add a little bit more of pressure at the bottom of the petal as i said it's getting a little bit thicker in this area if you just start to get acquainted with this technique you can try to paint in monochrome so no mixings you you take choose one of the paints from your palette vinacridon rose for example and use it as it is it's uh, it makes it a little bit lighter to be consistent with the colors and you can grab the bold mix right from the palette you see how how bold and sparkling it is if you grab it right from the palette now i dry my brush with a paper towel and i go along the petal and soften the edges uh, before i do the same procedure with the other side i dry my brush again it's important that you always he have clean and slightly damp brush next i need to find another petal which is uh, not intersecting with this one well, for example this big guy water in it in principle it will be always these steps while we are painting this petal area so once you paint one flower i guarantee you will practice a lot with this uh, um, painting dry on wet why it is called dry on wet because in principle it's even better to use um, the super bold mix from from your books or make a very very bold mix here so it's almost dry and then dry color dry pigments get into water into water area they distribute by themselves and create this unique unique wash outlining with the tip of the brush at this uh, moment i don't care how my watercolor distributes because i next step i take my clean and damp brush i go along the petals and remove firstly excess water and soften all these areas it's always nice to prepare a lot of these super diluted mix so you never stop in the middle of your painting try to create the same the same tone again and again now I switch the brushes and with the tip of the brush you go along the edge and proceed although it look all um technique all the same in my book i try to focus um on some 
in my book i try to focus on slightly different techniques and tips for each and every project so with each and every project you will learn something new and practice some new uh, moments of transparent painting for example when we paint bell flowers uh, i'm talking about different mixes and how to create compositions of two and more um, blooms with painting eucalyptus leaves i am um, teaching how to create nice smooth gradients and there comes multi-petaled uh, flowers like peony uh, and roses they're also a little bit different uh, painting wise so a lot each and every product it's something new to learn and i hope that will add really nice variety to your painting skills so now we are painting this a little bit side petal on this stage we are doing in principle all all uh, the same you can play around vary the amount of pressure and amount of paints you add maybe a little bit more a little bit less and then you soften everything very careful with the tip of your brush you remove unnecessary bleeds and may correct for example here it, it feels it's a little bit lost take more dry mix and go along the same edge with a little bit drier mix it's very important that this second bold mix it's it's almost like a dry uh, color from the <laughs> from your box and soften it a little bit so it's not it doesn't strikingly bright just like this now let's try it it's a little bit different approach with painting um, countable flowers, um, flowers with countable amount of petals, for example, magnolia, tulips, um, pansies, um, and with flowers with uncountable amount of petals. I mean, of course, you can uh, try and count. Um, petals on peony or roses uh, but in principle it's difficult to say from the first side how how many petals does the does this flower have and the approach to painting countable and uncountable uh, flowers petals it's a little bit different and so that's why I have two projects, uh, Peony and Rose, in the book. I think it's a little bit more complex, but if you follow my book in the order I prepared, you will really get hang of this technique. And I'm pretty sure painting roses or peonies will be just a pleasure for you. Let's add a little bit more of outlines here. And dry it. <laughs> Last petal from this group. Then you grab the bold mix, go along the edges of the petal, it's not even sides of the petal, and apply a little bit more pressure at the bottom area, just like this. Some super dry strokes dry your brush and and soften the edges right here i like how it moves i will let it dry now comes another stage when we will be emphasizing the transparency effect and we'll add all the inner details i would say it's my favorite part to emphasize the transparency, I prepared my diluted mix, pink mix. I made it a little bit darker 
than it was before. And now I just choose few overlapping sections. For example, this one. And I glaze it just this section, just this section with this mm, pink light mix. You can leave it like this or you can add a little bit, a little bit of accents, of border accents for the bottom part. As I said, petals, uh, they are very gentle on their tips and that's why I um, would not recommend you to go with all outlines again, but you can add more boldness to the very bottom. Now let's find another area to emphasize overlapping. For example, this area. No need to add extra color to each and every overlapping areas it probably will be uh, it will be too complex too bright but when you add several accents that will make this transparency effect really pops up with the tip of our fine brush we outline the outlined petal now I would like to add more of a contrast to the bottom area of the flower. I just choose those details which may be a little bit vanished and with the tip of the brush, with this bold mix, I go along the area and create small outline. Then I use my damp clean brush and with the tip of this brush I soften I soften these outlines. Now I'm just exploring what can I emphasize. This one, for example, this this really vanished this petal area, and we don't want that. We want to create very clean contrast between petals. Now this petal. This side petal, it has, um, it's folded, and when it is folded, it consists of two plates, two sides. So we need to add this extra side, just with this light color, light pink color. I create, <laughs> I create this um, fold, and I can very gently outline. I do, don't want to uh, stress much on this area. I want to keep it gentle. So I'm not outlining the top. I just add a little bit more of color to the bottom and then distribute it. And if you, or me, <laughs> went a little bit off the drawing, you can correct with the tip of the brush everything. Now let's dry it all together and uh, go to the details. For the brown parts like stem and pistil, I will need another mix. We, we created here pink mix, now we're creating brown mix. It will be sepia with a hint of quinacridone rose. Firstly, we are making this bold mix and then, as we did it before, we just dilute, <laughs> dilute the mix until it gets pretty transparent. With uh, darker colors, it's sometimes difficult to estimate the transparency. You have to check it on a piece of paper. Uh, with a bigger brush, in principle, we, um, we're still doing the same procedure as we did before with pestles. So we glaze the area of, of the stem with very transparent mix. Outline it with the bold mix. 
I try to overlap a little bit. I start to bring my darker color a little bit or from the pink area from the petals so to connect it with her organically. And when I add my outlines, I do some uneven, uneven strokes. I sometimes apply more pressure on the brush, sometimes less pressure. Um, if you see magnolias, um, you notice that their stems and branches, they have a lot of knots, unevenness in it. So that's what I'm trying to imitate here. And some, some parts I'm softening with my clean and damp brush. And some areas I leave untouched. What's important with this technique, um, your main focus is on the bud, is on the petal area and things like stamps and greenery around, you can uh, paint in a little bit loose way, in a little bit softened way. So now let's paint the flower center. I will take a smaller brush and my bold mix and I create this onion looking middle I actually would like to make it even more bolder ah, that's my transparent mix so I, I paint it I create my bold mix and I I can hardly see my outlines, for example, if that helps. At this stage, you can draw again the flower center like this, and that will make your hand uh, more stable, and you know what you're doing, where you're painting. So, and I create this... Uh, lines. Sometimes I apply a little bit more pressure, a little bit less pressure. So I paint basically it's dry on dry. I bring more boldness into this border between pink and brown. Then I switch to my mm, And I switch to my uh, bigger brush and soften some of the areas. No need to go with the brush all around. We need to soften some areas to create it very loose, organic. And go around this border. Soften it nicely. Right here, yes, you need to bring all the boldness and dilute it and turn it into the light one. You might like to add more boldness here. It's a very thick part, very important part in the flower. So yeah, it's really nice to make it very look very stable bold, defined, not like this, you just bring, um, you create a gradient, just like this. And now we paint a cluster of carpels with the tip of the brush, same bold mix, um, small, tiny carpels. I would like to emphasize that it is not a traditional botanical illustration where you have to be very precise uh, with flower details. We are um, showing the idea of how it looks inside the flower. Of course, you can always go more and more into details and be more and more precise. 
um, for this technique I, I really prefer to be a little bit loose so the flower is recognizable the details of the flower is recognizable um, but not over over thought I would say I like it uh, these paintings have a little bit of magic and um, some free hand in it. Add some details where it's, it looks lovely. Now we are going to paint leaves. So next pages they are about painting leaves or bracts, uh, these leaves looking petals. And now we will need to create a pleasant looking green mix. I usually use tallow green, which is in clear, when it is just a clear color from, from the palette. It looks awesome, <laughs> it looks extremely bright, and you hardly find this green shade in the nature. That's why. I mix it with burnt sienna to make it warm and a little bit dusty. Look how nice it, it works. You paint these separate leaves in principle in the same technique, but now it's a little bit more loose and um, easy going. And the mix can be a little bit bolder. I just paint all the area of each and every bract, it called, or you can say leaf, to make it easier. And with a smaller brush, you can add, while um, the paper is still wet, you can add small little dots, because uh, magnolia, Magnolia's leaves, they, um, they feel a little bit wooden, they feel a little bit um, uh, rough. And that's what we're imitating. Here on the leaves you can play a little bit, add hints of pinks, hints of um, burnt sienna. Maybe soften a little bit, add some texture. So. If we were very precise here, now you can relax and play around. There will be also some overlapping in these areas, but you, I think, already got the idea of painting like this. And I hope you already enjoyed. It's nice to add to the greenery same colors you used for petals it somehow helps to connect all these flower details about like this a little bit more of bold One important thing is to dry everything before you do the next layer. This uh, front leaf overlapping a lot, so we have to be careful not to press too much on a brush, so it will keep all the underneath layers undamaged, untouched. Of course, we can immediately add some now you can freely use whatever you have on your palette. A little bit bolder brown mix, uh, pink mix. Because pink petals they reflect um, they reflect on the green uh, on the greenery that creates a lot of nice color color accents on the petals. You can add overlapping um, bent areas to the leaves, play around.
the final leaf. Some accents, some I like this brown mix very much. You get nicely divide and, and create nice bold contrast. So I just instead of using green mix, I go with this brown mix and with my brush i soften the edges here and there if you notice magnolias um, rocks they have um, a little bit hairy texture now we will try to <laughs> imitate that i flatten my brush it's almost dry brush i go into one of my almost dry dwells with brown I can test it on a piece of paper and with very gentle moves I create this hairy texture on some of the leaves. No need to do it everywhere, few strokes is enough. And now just the final final touch i will probably take just sepia from the from the box from from uh, from my palette and go around add some um accents uh, because it might vanish a little bit soften too much no need to overdo it few accents Few outlines and our magnolia is ready. Thank you so much for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed the process. I hope you like this book as much as I do. If you would like to pre-order this book, you will find links in the description everywhere. <laughs> uh, please leave me some feedback and comments. Uh, what questions do you have about watercolor painting? Which flower you would like to paint next? I read each and every comment of you. And see you next time. Bye-bye.